Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to Christ. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he, let, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Congregation will please be seated. The first lesson, Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare, who will declare my guilty? Who will declare me guilty? The reading, this ends the first reading.
For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. If I A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.
Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the, poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? It could have been sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, that she has done will be told in remembrance of her. The Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and whenever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, he said to them, It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink, drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go up before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them did the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, 
Are you asleep? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, <coughs> Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and to the, all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him and their testimonies did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. <clears throat> then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt, then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, <clears throat> led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. 
Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon the Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. <clears throat> then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him <coughs> and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left, those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the temple of the curtain and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and Joseph and Salome. Salome those used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When the evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for, for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth 
and taking him down, taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Try that again. I've said many times before, as a preacher, this is one of the most fearsome spaces to step into, just after that reading. But I want to take a moment to reflect on something that is unique to Christianity. Christianity is the one religion in the world that came into existence through an act of violence but doesn't have a martyr's tomb to go back to. It came into existence through an act of violence that we've just heard retold to us. But unlike other religions that began with violence, when we go to the tomb, it's empty. There is no martyr's body there to remind us of the violence. In fact, we are reminded instead that the story doesn't end here. To borrow from the Lord of the Rings, as Gandalf is talking to Pippin in the movie version, this happens at another point in the written version, but in the movie version, all things are looking horrible. The city of Minas Tirith is under assault, and Pippin is realizing that when the cave troll breaks down the door right next to them, they're probably going to die. And Pippin says, I never thought it would end this way. And Gandalf looks at him with a smile, says, who says it ends? Here. Pippin is confused, but Gandalf says, this life, I'm paraphrasing, this life comes to an end. But then you see it. A fair sun rising on a fair green country. Blessing and hope are renewed. That's the promise that comes after this point in the story. To the Christian life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place, eternal in the heavens. This is the promise of Christ. It's the path that Christ has shown us through this moment, through this grief, comes blessing. Unfortunately, through history and many times through history, Theologians have distorted that, I believe, somewhat into saying that all grief and pain are blessings. No, they're not. They're grief. They're pain. If we could avoid them, we would. No question. We don't have to suffer. But our God is an opportunist. Our God looks into our lives and sees those moments of pain, those moments of suffering that we all have, and reaches into those moments and says, I'm so sorry you had to be here. But as long as you have to be here, let me show you an aspect of my love that I could not have shown you in any other way. Let me show you a moment of hope that you could not have seen in any other way. God does not cause the pain, but God will take advantage of it and use it to show us hope, to show us possibility where we may see none, to 
show us love when we may feel isolated, when we may feel like crying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in that moment, God's love embraces us <coughs> and holds us fast and offers us the empty tomb and life past where we ever expected it to be. The prayers of the people are form one found on page 383 in the Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop, Jonathan, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, Sioux Falls, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Gwet, Wendy, Rex, Lynette, Milt, Georgia, Father Paul, Don, Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those celebrating a birthday, Julie, Julie, Brooke, Tim, Caroline, and the very Reverend Ward. And for those celebrating an anniversary, John and Annie, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the absolution and the remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the Lord's name. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace. All right, Acolytes. Let's go. Ready? Put your hand up.
we don't have our ducks in a row. Um, first announcement is we're collecting rummage. Believe it or not, we need clothes. Who would have thought? Uh, the great find for this last couple of weeks was a toy chest shaped like a circus wagon on wheels with a rope to pull it. There's always something good that comes in. Um, camp dates are out. There's sign-up forms on the tables out there. I think they're out there, too, or ask at the front desk. I think you can also do it through the diocesan website. I'm not quite sure. Um, if you would like someone you know, adult or child or yourself, baptized for Easter Sunday, we need to know that by Wednesday. And then if you would like to donate for Easter lilies, if you would like your name on the list, uh, we need that by Monday, March 25th. Tomorrow. Which is tomorrow, or today. And as always, if you need a name tag, um, front desk, leave something on it, and then wear it, please. We hope you'll stay for the Palm Sunday brunch today. It's a free will offering right out in the commons, and all the proceeds go to children's and youth ministry. Any leftovers, um, I believe, we will have for sale, so just talk to Marcy or Jill or somebody there and see about taking home some cheesy potatoes or egg bake. Thank you. Did you have something, Wendy? Uh, I just want to take this opportunity uh, to thank our wonderful violinist who is here, Dr. Joanna Galou, uh, and to say that she will be playing more music for us, uh, some gorgeous uh, music at communion, and also at the end of the service, just so you're aware, uh, when we finish the service and uh, uh, the deacon has given the dismissal, uh, please remain in your seats. Uh, there will be music of a short duration that will be meditative, and then we ask that you leave in silence. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've been asked not to thank people by name for this next one, but I do need to mention the gratitude that I have. Um, most of you know these last three weeks, I was out for two weeks with a surgery and then caught COVID just as I was coming up from the surgery to recovery, I caught COVID and was back down again. Uh, so I've been out for three weeks. Wendy, our front desk person, has been out for a week with her own GI problems. Uh, Father Paul Sneevy has been out since early February with a subdural hematoma. He is recovering very nicely and is expected to make a full recovery and hopes to be back with us the Sunday after Easter. Uh, but in the meantime, we've been running very short staffed and I'm so grateful for everyone who has stepped forward to help us out through all this. You know who you are. Um, you have my gratitude, but also the congregation's gratitude. We wouldn't have gotten this far in Holy Week without all that help. So thank you. Are there any other announcements? Oh, our live stream today. Um, I do want to say a special thank thanks to my son, Andrew, who is not sitting at the back desk, you'll notice. He is running the live stream over the internet from Fresno, California. Uh, isn't technology wonderful? So thank you, Andrew, for willing, being willing to step in. Uh, Josh, my other son who normally runs it for us, is home with the flu. Um, so we do ask your prayers for him as well. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries coming up? And who else have I got here? Sherry, I'm going to put you on the spot. Because it's my birthday this Saturday. All right. So I would ask if you would bless the two of us. Well, I don't have the proper rubrics in my head. Go for I would it. I'll just offer a blessing impromptu. How about that? All right. Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for these two servants before you, Lord. Uh, we give you thanks for this year. Uh, we give you thanks that you have kept them. But uh, Lord, we pray for them in the year ahead that you would bless them, give them strength, give them comfort, give them peace when the road is difficult. Uh, Lord, sustain them. But today, we give you thanks. 
and ask that you would hear our prayers of thanksgiving for these people in your name. Amen. 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 Happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Our service continues on page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, We await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. 
Unite us through your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gifts of God for the people of God.
Jenny. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the body and blood of Christ. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread and one cup. Turning to page 366, let us pray together. (coughs) Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, Father, send us out to the work you have given us to love and serve you with gladness. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always.
Just quickly before our dismissal, I have two words of uh, thanks to give. First to the Cherub Choir and to Diane and Lou who directed and, and accompanied them. Thank you so much for your music this morning. And I would be very remiss if I didn't mention the vestments that uh, Deacon uh, Jerry and I are wearing this morning were created by and donated by Father Abbot Warren Schoberg uh, before his death. And we are very grateful to have those as a part of our, our Palm Sunday set. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.